All right. So hey, we're going to talk about energy management and um, on a more serious note, folks, really the reason we are doing energy management is because uh, amidst this pandemic and the leave, there are a lot uh, fewer flights happening. We're on leaves. Okay, I'm speaking for myself, by the way. I'm back to flying now, but I took a leave for four months. And so when, you're flying, you, when you find yourself in an environment where, where A, you're not flying as often, number one. Uh, number two, the ATC environment is less congested. You find yourself getting cleared for visual approaches a lot more. You're not getting vectors. You're not getting the speed uh, uh, restrictions on downwind, slow to 210, base leg 170. They can figure you. They descend you. They do everything for you. And before you know it, you're nice and stable at, at 1,000 feet for the approach. What we're finding now is cleared for the visual approach. And it's up to you to figure out how do I configure? How do I get down? How do I slow down? And that's entirely what I want to talk about in this, in this live feed here is energy management check it out guys a320 a320 first things first i'm going to start with some rules of thumb okay some rules of thumb that i use personally when i'm out on the line flying and uh here's let me switch markers on it real quick first rule of thumb is what i like to refer to as 30 and 10. if you follow the youtube channel you've probably heard this before 30 and 10. Now that means 30 miles from the airport, I want to be at 10,000 feet. And at 10,000 feet, of course, I want to be at 250 knots. So if you're taking notes, you're going to want to write this down, 30 and 10, 250. 30, 10, we're going to have to buy new markers here, and 250. No, we have, we have new. Do we? Okay, 30 miles out, 30 nautical miles out, 10,000 feet, 250 knots. From an energy management standpoint, you're going to find that your standard terminal arrival routes, the STARS, uh, they will conveniently build these so that you end up 30 miles away at 10,000 feet, thank you, and 250 knots. They conveniently, can you toss them? Thank you. They conveniently build it that way. And so if you're descending, not on an arrival, okay, but you're cleared direct to a fix, direct to a VOR, direct to the airport, you're going to want to keep in the back of your mind 30 miles, 10 and 250. In fact, you could even use the fix info page or put a waypoint out there to build a 30 mile ring around as a as a, a reference point as to am I somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 feet 250 knots at the time that I get 30 miles away. That's the first thing. Now, the next rule of thumb apart from 30, 10 and 250 is what I like to call the 12 and 12 rule. Okay, 12 and 12, 12 and 12. What does that mean? 12. Woo, this marker is fresh. Okay, now we're talking. Let me let me redo this over here. 30, 10 and 250. This is 30 miles. 10,000 feet, all right, nautical miles, 10,000 feet, 250 knots indicated airspeed. The next one is 12 and 12, which has to do with at 12,000 feet, at 12,000 feet, I begin a rate of descent using vertical speed of minus 1,200 feet per minute, and I pull the airspeed back to 250 knots. So 12,000 feet, we do vertical speed, minus 1,200 and you start rolling your speed back to 250 knots. This has everything to do, by the way, with uh, understanding that, of course, you may be descending above 10,000 feet at a speed higher than 250, and of course, upon reaching that 250 knot mark, you need to begin slowing down. So at the same time, we need to continue to go down and descend to comply with a clearance or a star. So we need to uh, kind of have a compromise between continuing a rate of descent and also slowing down. And I like to use 12,000 feet minus 1,200 feet vertical speed to kind of give me a good mix of both. All right. And ultimately, again, on the speed, we're going to select 250 knots. Now, you now have 30, 10, 250. You now have 12 and 12. The next one I'm going to give you is three to one. This is one that's very common. This is this is not A320 specific. This is not specific really to any airplane, but entirely um, universal. And what it relates to is for every uh, basically every three miles, I need to descend a thousand feet, right? So three to one says the following. If I am at 2000 feet, right? And, and I want to descend, let's say I have 2000 feet to lose, right? How much distance is required to lose that 2000 feet? So of course, 2000 divided by a thousand is two times three is six. You need about six miles. Okay. Let's say you're at uh, 15,000 feet. And you want to descend down to 10,000 feet. How many thousands of feet do I need to lose here? Okay. 
5,000, right? I got to lose 5,000 feet. 5,000 divided by 1,000, 5 times 3 equals 15. I need 15 miles to descend. This is basic 3 to 1 math, folks. Now, the next question is, I need 15 miles to descend, but at what rate of descent, at what rate of descent am I actually going to begin uh, uh, descending? And of course, the rate of descent needed to comply with this is five times your ground speed. Five times your ground speed. So if your ground speed is 400, you got to do 400 times five. And this is ultimately going to give you the rate of descent in thousands of feet per minute, right? Or hundreds, okay? In this case, thousands of feet per minute that you would need. Okay, so in this case, we need 2,000 foot per minute rate of descent. Now, for those of you that don't like multiplication, you can get the same math via division. Okay, you would basically say 400 divided by 2, 200, and you add a zero, 2,000. So if you prefer dividing as opposed to multiplying, you could take your ground speed divided by 2 and add a zero. Ground speed of 400 divided by 2 is 200 and add a zero, 2,000, and you ultimately get to the same result. Okay, what are we 10, 250? We got 12 and 12. We got 3 to 1. Let me just write it back up here. 3, no, no, I'm sorry, 30, 10, what am I saying? And 250. We got 12 and 12. We got 3 to 1, uh, which also ties into 5 times the ground speed for the rate of descent or ground speed divided by 2 plus a 0 on the end of it. You can do it that way if you want to do it that way. Okay. Uh, what else? The other one is decelerating from a level flight segment. For every 10 knots of deceleration, one mile is needed. 10 knots of decel equals one nautical mile needed. So if you are doing 250 knots, okay, you're doing 250 knots, and you want to slow down to 210 knots, all right, how many knots do we need to lose here? That's 40 knots. And of course, for every 10 knots we want to slow, we need one mile. So 40 divided by 10, you with me, is four. I need four miles. This assumes level flight. If you're descending, you're going to need about twice that, believe it or not. It's quite significant, the difference. So it's actually, this is assuming level flight, folks. Now, uh, this brings me to the point of understanding that you're going to want to Keep in mind that these jets do not go down and slow down, right? They either go down or they slow down, but they won't go down and slow down together. So typically, I'm an advocate of uh, getting down first and slowing down second or slowing down first, okay, which is an example I'm going to give you perhaps on a downwind leg, 180 flaps two, and we can get down pretty aggressively with spoilers. We'll look at that in a minute. But let's say for this example, we're going to actually get down first. So if I get down with thrust idle, which is a get down on it, idle thrust. Get down on it, come on it, get down on it, get down on it, get down on it, get down on it. I don't mean like this, man. I mean, get down with spoilers, okay? Woo! Uh oh, we got questions. We got questions. How do we get down? You, we should do one step no, no, dance no, no, no. classes, huh? Or we could we could call it two step dance instead of one step. Two step dance dot com. One and two. All right, thrust idle is a fixed thrust mode. You guys are probably tired of hearing me say the same thing over and over again, but it's a fixed thrust mode. And of course, in being a fixed thrust mode, the pitch is going to vary now to maintain the speed, which means. Now we can get down quite aggressively at 250 knots with spoilers. Now let me show you how this works out. Let's say I need to cross this point at 8,000 feet. Decal at 8,000. Man, they give us this clearance in Fort Lauderdale all the time. We're coming back from the Caribbean. And they say descend across decal at 8,000 feet. And, of course, because it's uh actually out there i think we're in international water still i gotta double check the star there but you could be uh let's say 8250 they give us 8250 knots <laughs> how do we get down right well frankly the first thing you could do is just put the 
put it in the MCDU and it'll calculate it for you. That's the easiest thing to do. But if you're like me and you like to back it up with mental math because you're a sharp, proficient, confident pilot, as we like to train here at one step Brett. <laughs> dot com then, then what you're gonna need to do <laughs> what you're gonna need to do is this i would encourage we get down first and let's say you're descending at um i think it is international water so let's say you're descending at at uh 290 knots and you come all the way down and you you do this entire descent at 290 knots right and you level off now from two for 290 knots to cross this at 8,250, how many knots do I need to slow down from 90 to 250? We just did this math, folks. It's four miles. It's 40 knots to lose. I need one mile for every 10 knots that I want to lose, which means I need four miles, which means I want to level off at 8,000 feet, four miles prior to four nautical miles prior to uh, uh, this point here. And of course, what I'm going to do when I level here is I'm going to simply roll the speed back. Airspeed will begin to fall off, right? And then we're going to cross perfectly 8,250 knots. And the, and the beauty of this is that with this particular technique, we have actually prioritized the go down before the slow down. You could also slow down before you go down, but that's not typically going to be used on an arrival. It might be used, though, in the traffic pattern. So we're going to look at that in just a moment. All right, let's talk about the downwind decel. The downwind D cell, folks. What is the downwind D cell? Okay, the downwind D cell says this. I'm coming in on downwind, and I pull the speed back to 210 knots. Okay, there's not a lot of times where you're going to need to be flying 250 knots away from the airport. Typically, I'm just going to pull it back to about 210. And if you're super high, okay, let's say this fix out here. Let's say this fix right here is uh, 2,000 feet, and they got you over here at 6,000 feet. And all of a sudden, they tell you, trainer one, to set and maintain 2,000. Look, if they're giving you an altitude that, uh, uh, that, that relates or complies or corresponds, whatever the proper word is here, that, that corresponds or correlates with an altitude that's on the final approach course, 2,000 feet, then you know they're getting ready to turn you inbound. They're getting ready to turn you onto the approach. So if I'm at six going to two, I got 4,000 feet to lose. Now 4,000 feet to lose, right? Divided by a thousand is four times three. You can do your little three to one math. The question now is how do I get down quickly? How do I get down quickly? The way to get down from 210 is to set your 2,000 feet. The second you get thrust idle, open descent you roll the speed back up to 250 knots, folks. I know, here's what's gonna happen now. So here I am, level at six. I need to get down to, to uh, 2,000. And now what I'm gonna do is initiate this descent and roll my speed from 210 up to 250. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna get a more aggressive descent, particularly now when we do step number two, which is throw the spoilers out. You put the spoilers out, remember in a 320 with the autopilot on, you're only gonna get half boards. And of course, with the autopilot off, you're gonna get full boards if you need them. But I would imagine, frankly, with even half boards and 250 coming down, you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Now you're gonna uh, get speed out star. You're gonna begin to level off down here, right around your 2,000 feet. And when you get to your 2,000 feet, you do the next step, which is pull your speed all the way back to 210, or actually even better, you can keep going back to 180 because they're about to turn you in. And remember, the thrust was idle from the top of this descent. When you get down here, the thrust will continue to be idle because when you get speed right here, which is a variable thrust mode, when you get speed here, you're not going to allow the engines to spool up because you're going to have pulled the, the, the airspeed back to 180 knots. It keeps the thrust at idle, very comfortable for the passengers. The spoilers are still deployed, helping us to slow. They now give us a base turn right over here, and we start configuring accordingly to ultimately end up coming inbound at 180 knots with flaps two. And this is what I like to refer to as the downwind D-cell. When I see that they, they are uh, keeping me high on the downwind, I like to slow down so that I can later trade that energy that I gave away on airspeed, right? I'm gonna later on, once cleared for the approach, initiate that descent and pick up the energy on the descent 
using idle thrust with a variable pitch in order to get down a lot more aggressively. And of course, don't forget to throw your spoilers in there and just be prepared to roll the speed back as soon as you get out star to begin leveling off and capturing that altitude. Now, the other alternative to this is for you to get down with 180 knots and flaps too. If you can slow back to 180 knots and put flaps two out, and by the way, if you're in a 7.3, this would be basically the same thing, only with flaps five, 180 knots and flaps five. You're clear for the uh, the descent. You set in that that altitude. You pull for an open descent or push level change, okay, whatever you want to call it, depending on the plane you're in. You pull the speed brake out, and now you, down you go quite aggressively. And that's a really good way to also get down uh, if that turn is going to be very tight, because at least now you got the energy out of the jet and you're sitting at 180 flaps too, which is very comfortable to accept even somewhere in the range of a six mile uh, final, right? And the flare for the 320, this is a good question. I would basically at 30 feet aim to be nearing idle, if not idle thrust in the flare. Remember your thrust levers in a 320 with auto thrust on, with auto thrust on, very crucial. Your thrust levers are to be thought of as thrust limiters. They do not actually give you the thrust necessarily that you're asking for, but rather they open the active range for the auto thrust to give you the thrust that it deems it appropriate to give you. So in the flare, I would begin pulling the thrust levers back, aiming to be at idle thrust by the time we hit about 30 feet. Um, hopefully that helps you out. I don't know if we had any other questions. George, if you did. pilot, say Joey. George, what's going on, brother? We got to do another live feed with you in here, man. Did we, we got a picture, right, with all the cameras? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, um, awesome. Let's keep going. 180 flaps two was the other one I mentioned. With the spoilers out, that's going to help you to get down quite aggressively. Okay, so we talked about, let me refresh this over here. We talked about 30, 10, and 250. We talked about 12 and 12. We talked about three to one. We talked about the downwind D-cell. We talked about uh, 180 and flaps two. How to get down in terms of ground speed calculation. We talked about the 10 nautical miles for every, uh, I'm sorry, 10, one nautical mile for every 10 knots needed to slow, right? Okay. Now, the next thing I wanna do to you guys is talk about some situational awareness aspects. A lot of times you're not, uh, I find that you become unstable for one of two reasons. Either one, you're not sure how to get the airplane stable with the tools you have. Landing gear, FMA modes, thrust idle open descent, fixed thrust versus variable thrust, spoilers, etc. Or it's not that you don't understand the tools you have, but it's actually that you lose situational awareness and you're not sure exactly where a thousand feet lies above the touchdown zone elevation. Now, a good example of this is in Seattle. 400 feet touchdown zone elevation, 1,400 feet we need to be stable. What does that mean, Joe? Center it on the localizer, center it on the glide slope. I need to be uh, not exceeding more than 1,000 foot per minute rate of descent at 1,000 feet, and preferably I need to be right on speed or at the very least correcting to it without a major exceedance so that we don't get what's referred to as a egregious unstable, I believe that's the word they use, egregious unstable approach, which basically means you're really unstable and you probably need to go around, okay? Um, so let's talk about the situational awareness factors, okay? The, the essay says this, I need to be stable by touchdown zone elevation plus 1,000. Touchdown zone elevation plus 1,000. So if my touchdown zone elevation is 12 feet, like what it is here in Miami, at 1,012 feet, I need to be stable. That means for me, that I need to, in the case of a 320, okay, I like to use 2,000 feet above touchdown zone elevation as a benchmark or as a check mark, if you will, as to the latest point to put the gear down. So if this is my runway, okay, here's a couple of rules of thumb on approach into this runway. At 2,000 feet, I need to have the gear down. This is 2,000 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. We're gonna assume the touchdown zone elevation here is a sea level, you know, we'll just call it zero for sake of calculation. So at 2,000 feet, gear down. Now, another tip I can give you is at 10 nautical miles, 
I like to be preferably at 180 knots flaps too. Now, some of you watching are going to say, wow, that's really slow, Joe, and perhaps it is. So uh, you don't necessarily need to be at 180 flaps too, but you need to be in the vicinity. Certainly no more than 210. By the time I'm at 10 nautical miles to the runway, I'm looking to be no more than 210 knots, preferably 180 flaps two or slowing to 180 flaps two. And this is gonna get tough if you've already captured the glide slope and you're, you're doing, let's say you're coming inbound and you're doing 210 knots, or let's say you're at green dot, which is like 200 knots, right? You're doing 200 knots, flaps one, you captured the glide slope, you come, you're coming down, you're in a loaded A321 sharklet, and now you're trying to slow down. It's going to be tough to slow down right here. And of course, the way to slow down, apart from using spoilers to help you, is likely going to be, as you well know, put the gear down sooner than the late, you know, check mark of 2,000 feet. So here you may find yourself swinging gear at 25, 2,600 feet, 2,500 feet. None of these that I'm putting on the board, by the way, are absolutes. Nothing that I'm telling you is absolutes. Everything is dependent upon scenario, dependent upon the environment, ATC environment, dependent upon what they ask for uh, of you in terms of speed, because oftentimes they want you to do 170 or 180 to a five mile final or what have you, right? But these are some guidelines, if you will, that can help you to understand where you're at energy wise. So typically at 10 nautical miles, certainly no more than 210, slowing to 180 flaps to no later than 2000 feet, gear down. Uh, and this is gonna help you to ultimately be configured in a, in a full configuration with landing checklist by 1000 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. Okay, I'm gonna break off this camera for a second. Let me go talk to my people in the chat. Hello, by the way, if you didn't see, we now have this uh, get everything forever offer. Because a lot of people said, Why, can, can, can we keep your stuff forever? And the answer now is yes. So you can head to the website and check that out. We do have a Get Everything Forever offer. And we also have various others ranging from $99 all the way up to uh, $2,997. So whatever fits your budget, we want to work with you. We're going to be here for you. Juan and Joe are not stuck in a video. Juan and Joe <laughs> are, are, this is one of the things that we are very much adamant about. You need a self-guided, self-paced, self-study journey where you're not alone. Because there is no benefit in doing everything entirely alone, folks. Learning these type ratings is an uphill battle. You are climbing a mountain when you go to these training programs. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Nobody climbs a mountain by themselves. Period. They don't. You need a team, and we want to be your team. And I promise you, I will be here with you to answer the questions as best as I can. I don't have all the answers, but if I, if it's something you ask that we don't know, I'm going to do my best to go out and get it. All right? And Juan, too. And Shally, uh, too. And Juan, too, and Shally, too. Uh, but hopefully you found some value in it, and we'll see you in the next live event that we do here. And by the way, if you want to come here and watch it in person, come watch it in person. The coffee's free, man. It's on us. All right. We'll see you in the next one. And the water. <laughs>